The best way to learn synthesizers is by knowing the most important concepts, how they work and how to use them. And I made this video exactly for that. You'll end up knowing all the essentials of synthesis and how to start your sound design journey. This video will cover some basic terms, so if you want a second part with more advanced concepts, make sure to give this video a like. Number 1. Oscillators. An oscillator is what generates the sound. This is because sound is made of different waves, and waves are based on repeating oscillations. The most basic one is the sine wave, which in a spectrum analyzer looks like a singular tone. Now, harmonics are a concept for another video, but keep in mind that having more of these peaks in the spectrum will create a richer sound, which we can also call timbre. Many analog synths don't have a sine wave, and the most common are the triangle, which is very similar but a bit richer, the sawtooth, very rich with all the overtones, and the square, which is colder and only with the third harmonics. It's important to know that some synths will call the square a pulse, because it's going up and down. From here you get what's called pulse width, which is basically the duration of the positive or negative information in the wave. A different pulse width will change the sound, making it sound similar, but not quite. Number 2. Frequency. Frequency is how many times a wave oscillates in a second. It's measured on hertz. Theoretically, humans can hear from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, depending also on your age. You can find a white noise generator on many synthesizers, and this is a sound that has all the frequencies at the same time. Number 3 is amplitude. To keep it really simple, the amplitude is the size of a waveform in the vertical scale. The bigger it is, the louder it will be. Changing the volume or gain of a sound is basically changing the amplitude. Number 4 is the filter. The most basic form of synthesis is subtractive, which means taking away parts of the sound. The filter acts upon the frequency spectrum. The best way to learn it is by using filters with this visualizer. This is basically a spectrum, from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. And everything inside this shape will make a sound. That's why this is called a low pass filter, because everything below the cutoff point will make a sound. Other types are the bandpass, the high pass, and the notch. With this visualizer in mind, you can use filters that are just a knob or a fader. Number five is the resonance. Filters will have a curve on the point they start cutting. You can change the slope to make it steeper. And this is the cutoff point. It's on that point where you can add resonance. This will create a bump or an increase in volume in that specific frequency area, creating a timbre that gets richer in this point. This is great to get these crispy tones. Some filters, when you boost too much of the resonance, can even give you a tone, because they become so steep that you are increasing a specific frequency. Number 6 is modulation. One of the most important aspects of synthesis is movement. So modulation is taking a signal generator and making any parameter move on the same manner, letting you create automatic movement. Number 7 is the envelope. I believe every synthesizer will have some sort of amplitude envelope. That means a one-shot movement that will control the volume. Again, a modern synthesizer will let you visualize how this works. Bottom is no sound or minus infinity, and top is maximum sound. The amplitude will follow this shape in terms of time. The most common envelope is the ADSR, where you can change the attack or how long does it take to reach the maximum volume. The sustain is the level it will stay as long as you're pressing a key. The decay is how long does it take from the attack to reach the sustain. And the release is how long does it take to reach again silence when you stop pressing the key. Some envelopes won't have sustain, some envelopes will be just attack and decay, but you get the idea. Now, still on the topic of envelopes, the other common one is the filter envelope. This works exactly the same as for the amplitude, the difference is that in most cases you can choose the amount of modulation that the envelope applies to the cutoff point. Some synthesizers will have one envelope for amplitude and for the filter, but you will still can change the amount. Besides that, more advanced synthesizers will have extra envelopes that you can route to any parameter. Number 8 is the LFO. 
This stands for Low Frequency Oscillator, meaning that the speed is usually below what humans can hear. In most cases, they can be assigned to pitch or to filters, and in advanced synths they can be assigned to anything. They will have the same shape options as the oscillators, but again, in advanced synths they can go so much more crazy. Number 9 is Pitch. Pitch is the sound of a synth in relation to the keys or notes of an instrument. In every synthesizer you can change the pitch of individual oscillators or the whole synthesizer. Most commonly you can change it in octaves, in semitones and in cents. This last one is the most specific, letting you go microtonal. Keep in mind that 100 cents is one semitone. This is useful for many things, and the most common is to have more than one oscillator sounding at the same time, and change the pitch by cents just by a little bit. It creates a nice effect. Number 10, Unison. Unison will create copies of the sound. How many copies of the sound and how much detuning you apply depends on every synth. Usually you will have a detuning amount. You are now understanding that every synth has all of many of these parameters. Thing is, sometimes they are differently labeled, some will have visualizers, others not, and some synthesizers will be more advanced with more options. So of course you have to look and compare the parameters of the different synths that you encounter. So what I mentioned up until now are the basic concepts for sound making, but there are others that can give you better understanding of how some stuff works. Number 12 is voicing. Voices are how many oscillators or copies of oscillators can you play at the same time. In the older times, many synths were monophonic. That means that you were able to play one key at a time. Other analog synthesizers will let you play as many keys at the same time as for many oscillators you have. And true polyphony wasn't very common. On virtual synthesizers, that doesn't really matter. It depends on processing power. But more often than not, you will have monophonic features as an option. It's actually pretty useful to play solos and basses. The latter because it avoids the frequencies clashing. This is where you can find other concepts such as legato. With legato, every time you press a new key without releasing the other immediately, the envelope won't be re-triggered, so you will have a constant sound. This is excellent when LFOs and envelopes start from the beginning with each new key, but you want to have a constant movement while pressing different keys. For instance, having a long filter sweep while playing a solo. Number 13 is Glide. Glide is making it so the pitch change between one note to the other becomes gradual. It usually has a speed knob that starts on milliseconds. That way you can have a really short glide or you can go crazy and have a longer one. Some other scenes will have glissando, which is basically the same as glide, but is not a constant change in pitch. It will follow the chromatic scale. To hear it better, we have to go really slow. Finally, today we have a lot of different features that will change depending on how we play, but for me the most important one is velocity. In modern advanced synthesizers you can use velocity for anything you want, but the most common use is for volume and filtering. The usefulness of this is to make a synth sound feel a bit more expressive, because it imitates real-life instruments like a piano. With all of these concepts, you can understand better a synthesizer and it's going to be easier for you to start making sounds. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.